Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to share something kind of fun with you. Um, it's actually kind of a product, product recommendation um, because I've been using the Denise Knitting Needles for about 12 years. Um, I started knitting when I was 25. I didn't learn as a child. And um, I made my first knitting needles with dowels. And I don't even see them anymore. I, I sharpened a dowel and that's... Oh, here, I have one right here. Um, my first knitting needles I made by hand with a dowel and a little clay stopper I put on the end and uh, that's all I had to begin with so when I saw the Denise um, interchangeable knitting needles at my local yarn store I asked my husband for these for Christmas and I got them and then all of a sudden I had all the needles I could want for size 5 all the way to 15 I could do circular needles which is great because I have small hands so the smaller knitting needles the smaller length was easier for me to manage and now that I teach children's classes um, I find that children especially little ones like five years old have a much easier time with the with the shorter needles and then you can make them circular or straight or whatever you want well recently I just went to the Denise website I'd never been there before and I saw they had a crochet set and um, I mentioned on my blog how much uh, how awesome they looked and how I was going to ask for them for Christmas and they sent me a set so I'm very uh, thankful for that and um, and this is what they sent me so it has all of the crochet hooks um, from a size F or 3.75 millimeters all the way up to a, a US size um, 19 or 15 millimeter um, so that's what I'm going to try today actually and what you do is you choose a cord I'm going to do some um, Tunisian or Tunisian <laughs> I'll let you be the judge uh, crochet and so what I'm going to do is insert one end into the end of the hook I'm going to give it a push it in give it a twist and there, that's locked in there nice and securely, exactly the way the needles work. And then you put a stopper on the end because um, with Tunisian crochet, you don't want the, um, the you're going to be crocheting all your stitches onto the hook and then off again. So you don't want them to slide off the end. So you got the little stopper there. And um, I think this would be a really awesome Christmas present to anybody who knits or crochets. Or um, if you have children that are very responsible and don't lose parts and pieces, it would be a great set uh, for kids. Not my kids, because they, they would have I would have to be in control of these and lend them out on a uh, as needed basis because mine wouldn't keep them the set together very well. I don't think. All right, so I made this um, in Tunisian crochet or Tunisian, whichever potato potato, um, and I used the only hook that I had, the only uh, Tunisian hook that I had. And um, I found that it was kind of cumbersome. I didn't like a long length, and I think if I was doing a blanket or anything big, it would actually be too heavy on the end to really use too much, to use comfortably. Um, and also, since this is probably about a size, um, a size 10, 10 and a half maybe, um, it was a little too small to show off the unique texture of this yarn. It's pretty and it's super warm and thick, but, um, but I would have liked a quicker project and it would have been quicker to do on a larger needle, and I think the yarn would show off a little bit prettier that way. So, I have some balls of yarn here that I thought might be interesting to combine. Um, I have a funky fur, which is a pom-pom and an eyelash combined, and I have this ribbon, and I have, um, I'm torn between the uh, Busseel, multicolored Busseel, or the gray homespun, but I think I'm going to go with the gray, even though my gut tells me I love color, but I think the gray will actually make those two yarns look a little prettier. So I'm going to uh, use these three different yarns. Uh, Fancy Furs by Lion Brand. I got it for 99 cents. <laughs> Go me, and I got this for 99 cents too at Martin. So, um, this is going to be a pretty cheap scarf to make. I don't know where this gray came from. And uh, I do want to try to find the center pull of this ball. So, I, what you do is you yank, you dig around in the hole, and you pull out a gobby yarn, and you should have the end in there somewhere. Oh, good. I do. <laughs> I hate it when I can't find the, find the end of the yarn. Now, the nice thing about. Um, uh, Tunisian crochet is that, or the afghan stitch, is that you don't twist your work. So you can actually use several strands and not have them turn into a tangled, jumbled mess, which is awesome because nothing worse than a tangled mess of yarn. This ribbon yarn, though, I don't think I can grab the middle because it's kind of wound on a cone, a core. I know this is probably a lot of information, and I don't know if anyone's going to find this. If anyone's going to find this terribly interesting, but if you've been wondering about these Denise interchangeable crochet hooks, I think you'll find it hopefully uh, somewhat useful. So I've got my three yarns set out here. Um, I'm going to start with homespun because it's more of a sturdy yarn. So I'm going to begin, as always, with a slip knot. Put it on my hook. And I haven't used these. This is my first time. I just got them in the mail last night. Also, I want to uh, to mention that Denise interchangeable um, hooks and knitting needles are made in the USA. And I tr it's I, I try 
to whenever I can purchase USA made items um, and support our our um, domestic economy since most things we get nowadays are made overseas. So what I'm going to do, I don't think I'm going to need too many stitches on here to make a scarf, probably about 8 or 9, between 8 to 10, somewhere around there. So it's going to be a very quick project. I always find the first couple rows to be extremely awkward. I'm going to put a couple more, one or two more stitches. And I'll show you my little trick for weaving in ends, because I don't like to uh, to weave stuff in after the fact. So when I go to grab this this yarn number two, my ribbon, I'm going to make sure that I have, I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to have a nice long length there, and I'm actually going to work in my ends as I go. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to skip Okay, so we got one stitch on our hook, and this might be a little difficult to see because we have this bumpy yarn, but if you go to my um, <laughs> Tunisian crochet, uh, say it and crochet it video, you will uh, you not necessarily know how to say Tunisian when you're done, but you'll know how to, uh, you'll know how to crochet it anyway. So we're going to skip that first stitch, and we're going to go into the, the uh, second one from the needle, and um, I'm going to pull through a new stitch. And I'm going to do this all the way down. So we're going to have... Um, and look, I'm pulling through both ends there so that I'm not going to have to weave in any ends. I can actually trim off any uh, hanger-ons at the end. So, and all these stitches are remaining on our hook. But you could do regular crochet with these. You wouldn't even need to add an end on. And that would be a great way if you're a beginner because then you'd have all your hooks. Um, most any hooks that you could possibly need unless you're doing some, some tatting or some, you know, small crochet with string or something like that. Um, it's a great way to get a collection started. I think the crochet set is about $45 and the knitting one is like $55, I think. Uh, but you can double check on the on the uh, Denise website. I don't know if they run sales very often. Hopefully, folks at Denise, if you do run a sale, let me know because I will pass it along to my viewers and blog readers. All right, so now we've got our stitches on here. Now, if you do what I do and you weave your ends in as you go, um, you want to make sure that you realize that, that you might have two loops, but that's one stitch. So just keep that in mind if you're, um, if you're doing that. So now I'm going to pick up my third, um, my third color. And again, I'm going to do the double end thing. I don't need quite as long of a tail. I, I grabbed more of a tail than I thought I needed. Um, and then, so what you do here is, remember, this is one stitch. It looks like two, but it's really one. So I'm going to pull through one stitch. And then the rest of the way across, I'm going to go through two. And yeah, I'm a little slow at this. I'm not used to this this old thick of a hook. I gotta go through that one too. And I'm working my tail as I go. And then Tunisian crochet is kind of like um, each row is done in two passes, kind of. It's kind of funky. Um, but once you get to that third row, you kind of you really have an idea of what you're doing. It can be a little bizarre at first though, but I, I think it's, I don't know, for some reason I'm really drawn to this type of crochet. I'm really having a good time with it. I think it's because it's so easy to stripe and to mix colors, and I just, I love to mix colors. It's like when I scrapbook, I love um, to mix pattern paper. All right, so there, I've got this um, little bit of fabric here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my uh, gray fabric, my gray, uh, blah, 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 my gray yarn again. And so when you go back, what you're looking for are the vertical bars. So we have this first one that's gray, okay, and then all the other ones are colored, and we can see them really clearly because we see that ribbon, the the ribbon. So it's pretty much all those ribbons except for this first one that's gray. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip in. Well, that's my oops, that's my working yarn. Oh, I've gotten it twisted around already. There we go. Oh my, I'm not a professional crocheter, but all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip into that first vertical bar. I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to pull it through and leave it on my stitch. So I've got that that uh, funky fur there, and I've got my first stitch that I've made with the uh, with the gray. I'm going into my second vertical bar and pulling it through. Going to my third vertical bar and pulling it through. Um, You'll probably, if you're really curious about this type of crochet, I would urge you to watch another video that I did because I did it with smooth yarn, so it's easier to see. And um, I did do some contrasting colors so you could see it a little easier too. But um, 
with all these different textures going on, it can be a little more difficult. But I wanted to, for this really this video, I just wanted to kind of share my new goodies that I got in the mail and thank the Denise company for sending them to me. And I'm um, kind of show you what the kits are about in case you're a beginner and you're looking to um, quickly build your stash of hooks or needles. Um, like I said, I didn't know how to crochet or knit until I was pregnant with my first son, and that was like 12 years ago. And you know, you're never too old to learn. <laughs> you can teach an old dog new tricks. All right, now I'm going to pick up the um, going to pick up my ribbon again, and I still have quite a bit of a tail there, so I'm actually going to keep going with both of those ends because with a gauge this big, there's plenty of room in those stitches to hold both of those. So I'm pulling through one, then I'm going to go through two. So you're not decreasing because you're making a stitch every time. So one of those stitches you're pulling through is that brand new one that you made. I usually don't use my fingers to pull them over the loops, but with this uh, this really big slippery uh, yarn, I am. Um, <laughs> but you do it however you want to do it. There's no wrong way, I don't think. You do it however's comfortable for you. And, um, you know, if, if you enjoy doing it a certain way, that's the way you do it. You're only going to do it if you enjoy it. But look how easy the stitches are slipping on and off. It's, um, I like these. I think they're nylon. They don't feel like your typical plastic um, hooks and they're warm to the touch, kind of like, you know, your bamboo would be. I just really, I just really enjoy them. So now I'm down to just the one because I've woven in that tail and I'm pulling off those last two. And then, you know, you just keep up the pattern. You just now, I would grab um, the other yarn that was available over here, which would be the funky fur. And um, I've had no problem carrying the yarn up the side, but if you felt like you it was a little loopy on the edges, which I haven't had that problem, you could um, you could crochet in edging. So now I'm going into these uh, these gray homespun bars. Oops, I ended up grabbing the other. I will have to take those a couple of those out because I ended up grabbing the wrong stuff. I was grabbing my ribbon yarn too. That's not going to work very well. Let's pull that out of there. That doesn't belong there. <laughs> um, but you can see it's. Uh, I am working with three different yarns and they are quite um, quite highly decorative. So you just have to keep an eye out and make sure you don't grab the wrong one by mistake. And I'm going into again to the vertical bars. That first one there, that's the funky fur. I'm skipping that one. I'm going in here because that one is attached to the stitch I already have on my hook. Um, and just a little tip is to count your stitches when you're done a row and make sure you have the same amount that you had on the previous row and then you'll end up not decreasing or increasing because um, it can get a little tricky when you're working with these really um, decorative yarns. But pretty much that's uh, that's all I had to say about these. Um, I do enjoy this product. It's the Denise interchangeable um, crochet set and they have the knitting set too. Um, I've been using the knit knitting set for 12 years. I haven't had any problem with like the, uh, I know some people are worried that the um, the cords would untwist. I haven't, I have never had the cords come apart. Look how pretty that is though. Look at that really neat fabric that you make just by, you know, picking up a different strand of of yarn as you go. I haven't had any problem with my, um, the cords coming undone. I know people have I've seen, because before I, uh, I asked for them, I did a little research and I was wondering like, do I want the interchangeable ones? Are they gonna work out? Well, am I better off getting a bunch of straight needles? But um, but having small hands, I like having the, sm the uh, circular needles. I like having that length, but I haven't had any problems. And I have heard the kinds that screw on the ends, which I have not used, so I cannot vouch either way. I've heard those can unscrew, but I haven't had any problems with the uh, the Denise ones coming undone. So, you know, I can't compare them to another interchangeable set, but I can say that these are pretty awesome. And for my first time working with these hooks, I have to say I'm feeling pretty comfortable with them. But there, you know, just in a couple minutes while I'm gabbing, not even really focusing, I've got this really pretty swatch of fabric. It's really funky, and um, I'm going to have a lot of fun using these. So again, Denise, interchangeable knitting needles, din interchangeable crochet hooks. If you want to check them out, or if you have any questions, you can leave a comment, or I'm sure you can uh, go to the website and email them, and they would be happy to help you out too. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Denise, for sending me these great crochet hooks. I really appreciate it. And until um, next time, happy crafting.